Hi, sixth graders. This is Mrs. Gall. Today we're going to talk through how to solve multi-step equations and inequalities. This will be an extension skill. Grab your notebook, open up to a fresh page, and press play when you're ready to continue. Our goal with multi-step equations and inequalities is to get the variables on the same side. We start by moving the smallest variable. Then we get our constants on the same side. We want to make sure we're moving to the constants to the opposite side that the variables were moved to. We're going to use inverse operations to solve today. Let's take a look at what that all means. Just a friendly reminder, you must show your work when solving equations and inequalities. These slides will have the work laid out. Please make sure you're writing down these examples so you know what it means to show your work. Here's our first example. 2c minus 7 equals c plus 6. We're going to start by getting all of our variables to the same side. Now, when we're moving variables from side to side, we are not going to multiply and divide. We are actually going to add and subtract using those inverse operations. I'm going to be on the lookout for my smallest variable. I like to move my smallest variable first. This helps so that I don't go into the negatives as often. So if I look at my two variables, on this side of the equation, I have 2c. On this side of the equation, I have c. Which one of those is my smallest? Well, that would be c. Look at the sign out in front of c. I'm looking for if it's a positive or a negative. It's a positive. So to move it to the other side, we're going to use the inverse, which is to subtract it to the other side. When we're moving variables from side to side, we want to add and subtract. We don't do the multiplying and dividing until the very last step here. If I subtract c, that cancels out my c's over here because c minus c cancels out. And then 2c minus a c leaves us with 1c, which is the same thing as just c. All of my variables are now on the left side of the equation. I want to get them by themselves now. So now it's a one-step equation where I need to get rid of this constant over here. I want to move that to the other side of the equation. Right now I'm seeing a minus 7. So to move that to the other side of the equation, we're going to add 7 to both sides. Remember, whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other to keep it balanced. That leaves me with 1c equals 13, and 1c is the same thing as c, so we actually got down to our answer that c equals 13. What does that mean? That means if I went and plugged in a 13 anywhere I see a c in our expression, I would be able to get both sides equal to each other. Let me show you. I'm going to take out the c after the 2 and place a 13. And then I'm going to take out the C over here on the right and replace that with a 13. Let's see if both sides are equal to one another. 2 times 13 is 26. 26 minus 7 is 19. 13 plus 6 is 19. Does 19 equal 19? Yes, that's true. So if that was a true statement, that means my answer works. Let's try another one. Write this down. Now we're looking at an inequality. Start by moving your smallest variable. I have 5m and 3m. Which is smaller? My 3m. When we're moving variables from side to side, we add or subtract. Since my 3m is a positive, to move it to the other side, I'm going to use the inverse, a negative, which is the same thing as subtracting it out of there. 5m minus 3m is 2m. 3m minus 3m, that cancels out the 3ms. We're just left with 2 on the right-hand side. All of my ms are together. Now let's get our constants together. We need to move our negative 6 over to the other side. To move the minus 6, we're going to add 6 to both sides. That cancels out our 6s. We're left with 2m is less than 8. At this point, when all of your m's are together and all of your constants are together on one side, 
this is where the multiplying or dividing would come into play because what I'm seeing is 2m or 2 times m is less than 8. I need to get m by itself. So to get rid of that 2, the inverse of timesing by 2 is dividing by 2, and that will give me m is less than 4. That means if I plug in anything less than 4 for m, this inequality would stay true. If you are feeling comfortable to try one on your own, you can pause the video. If you would like me to walk through it or when you're ready for me to walk through it, press play. I'll do that now. I'm going to start by moving my smallest variable, which is my 6x. Remember when we're moving variables from side to side, we add and subtract. And since the 6 is a positive, I'm going to subtract to cancel it out of there. That leaves me with just 10 on the left hand side and then I get 2x minus 8. My x's are over here, so let's get rid of that minus 8 that's on this side, get those constants together. To get rid of a minus 8, the inverse of subtracting is adding 8, so we're going to do that to both sides. That cancels out my 8's. I'm left with 18 equals 2x. Now, that's great that 18 equals 2x, but I need what 1x is. So to get 1x, I need to divide both sides by 2, since 2 times x, the inverse of timesing by 2, would be dividing. That gives me x is equal to 9. It's okay that the x is over here on the right and the 9 is over here on the left. That means if I plug in a 9 where x is, both sides would stay equal to each other. One more. Maybe you want to try this one on your own and press play when you're ready to hear. This one's kind of interesting because my smallest variable is actually a negative. Negative 5y is smaller than a positive 2y. To move a negative 5y, I'm going to add 5y to both sides. That's the inverse of that negative. That cancels out my 5y's on the left. I have 14y is greater than or equal to 7y. To get y by itself, right now I have 7 times y, so I need to divide by 7. I get 14 divided by 7 is 2. That means 2 is greater than y, or the y has a less than part facing towards it, so y is greater than or sorry, y is less than or equal to 2. So if I wanted to graph that, I really need to think about which way the symbol is facing. This would be a shaded in dot because it has the or equal to. y has the less than symbol facing it, so we want to make sure we're shading towards values like 1, 0, and so on into the negatives. All right, you guys, that's all I have for you today on this extension lesson. Check in with your teacher if you have any questions.